Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again. Now, if you watch the rest of my channel, you'll know that I don't just make jewellery, I also repair and restore jewellery, and in fact, anything that's made out of silver. So I get a lot of things sent to me from collectors and antique dealers. Interesting little project today. This is an antique solid silver fish slice. So silver blade, silver handle, and it's got a few problems and it needs a bit of love and attention. So let's take a closer look at it, identify the problems, and I'm going to show you the tricks and tips that I use to bring this back to life. So, follow me. Here it is. It's quite a large piece, all sterling silver. So we've got a sterling silver blade, a sterling silver handle. And first impressions, it looks okay. Uh, there are no dents on the handle. You can see there, it's pretty good condition. And all this beautiful engraving on the blade. And it's not too bad. But once you look closely, you start to see the problems. So firstly, if I turn it sideways, let's zoom in here. If I look at the joint here between the handle and the blade, there's quite a bit of gunk around here. And it looks like bits of dried glue. So that's a bad sign. That makes me think that this handle's been glued in at some point in its life. And also, if I turn it round and we look at this area close up, I don't know if you can see here, but the blade is actually slightly off centre. It's slightly off to one side. And again, I can see traces of glue round here. So I think the blade has come out and it's been glued back in at some point in its life. But there's another issue as well. If you look here, I can see a bit of a dent there where the, the blade's bent. But there's a line which runs along the top here. And in the middle here, that line disappears. Now, why does the line disappear? Well, if you look closely, you might not be able to see this on the camera, but if I hold it to the light, I can see a little shadow there. And there's also a shadow underneath there. And as this line goes across, this line disappears. So what that says to me is that whole blade has been broken and it's been soldered there and soldered there. And that's why that line has disappeared when it's been filled with the solder. So it's bent, it's off centre, there's glue around the middle, there's a bit of the engraving missing at the top here, and there's a solder joint there and there, and a bit of a bend. So what am I going to do to sort this? Well ideally what I want to do is separate the handle from the blade. Before I apply any heat, I just tried holding the handle and whittling the blade and I can feel that it's actually quite loose. So very gently, I'm just whittling the blade and I think this will just come out. There we go. That's all it is. So that's nice and simple. So I can see that what we have inside here is a kind of brown sort of treetle like material which is like a kind of an old kind of resin and so I should be able to set this back in just by warming it up and then placing the handle back in. Luckily there are no major dents in it but there's just a couple little scuffs and scrapes here and there so all I'm doing is I'm just using a blue silicone rubber wheel just, just working my way around it, any scratches, dings, just give a little buff. Nice and simple, nice and gentle. Now you can see here a couple of scratches there, just where it's been on the end of the pommel. So just give a quick polish, just take those out, nice and gentle. And the silver's not wonderfully thick, so I can't be too aggressive with it. So just enough to blend those scratches out, so it keeps its age and its antique look, 
but just gets rid of anything horrible. Really important thing, especially with antique pieces, is I never polish over the hallmarks. The hallmarks tell you who made it, when, date, and in the case of certain makers, it can really add value to the piece. So don't want to damage those at all. And if anything, if I leave them like that with the blackening in the bottom, it actually makes them better to read. So I'll polish round them and up to them, but I never go over across the hallmarks. Never. Okay, so the handle has had all the little spots and blemishes removed, and I've cleaned it up down the bottom here where all that glue was. I can't see any damage down there, so that's good. It seems in good condition. So I'm going to give it a buff, but very lightly, and I just want to polish the highlights, these areas here, just to get them nice and smooth, but I want to keep all that ageing and toning. And I've got just the perfect tool to do that. Follow me. This is the Bench Basics Polishing Mortar by Pepe Tools. And this is absolutely fantastic. And this has several advantages over my big bench polisher behind me. Firstly, it uses smaller wheels. So this is great for little delicate projects like this. Secondly, it's got variable speed. So I can slow it right down, 500 RPM, right up to 8,000. And you'll notice, even at 8,000 RPM, notice how quiet it is. I'm using a firm mop, so it'll only polish the highlights. It won't get into those recesses where I want to keep the patina. A little bit of the Menzerna Intensive Polish. I'm even going to go a little bit slower. And very gently, I'm just going to buff those flat spots. Just put a little bit of a shine on it, nothing too much. And just work my way around. Just cleaning it basically. That's a good way of cleaning it rather than polishing it. Just blending in those little areas where I've removed the scratches. Um, there's a slight matte texture. You see I've sanded this bit here so just a little quick polish. And there we go. So here I'm using a flat steel block and I'm using a nylon faced Thor hammer. So I'm just tapping it where the main dent is there. This is very slow, very gentle. I don't want to break it, I don't want to snap it, and I certainly don't want to put any marks on it that I'll have to polish out later. So very gentle. That's looking pretty dead straight now. I don't think I can improve it any more than that. So next, I just want to turn my attention to this little area here. So like I showed you before, where it's been soldered previously here, not by me, you can see that there's a gap in that line there. So I'm going to re-engrave that little line there. It'll make a big difference, I think. To do this, I've got a rubber pad here. So I'm going to put it on the rubber pad so it's nice and flat. And I'm going to get a steel rule. And I'm going to put the steel rule just on that line. Now like I said before, the engraving is quite good here, so all I'm doing is just touching up, just where there's a few little scratches around the flat surfaces. I can see a little chip just on the edge of the blade there, so very gentle, just polish that, run the polisher along the edge, and that's it, that's literally that's all I need to do. When it's polished afterwards, that will be absolutely perfect. Again, a little silicone wheel, just running it round there. Just cleans it all off, gets rid of any scratches, and just gets it nice and clean again, ready for polishing. You can see this area now is looking a lot better. Now the last part is the tang. This is a 3M radial disc, exactly like the ones you've seen me use before on the little hand pieces, but this is a bigger version designed for the bench polisher. So let's just put on. Um, this is the coarsest grit. This is, let me take a look for you, this is 80 grit. So you see that will remove all the glue and shellac 
uh, and any corrosion that's on there but it'll give you a nice rough finish which will help it grip when I put it back in. Yeah, brilliant. A little bit more attention round the middle though where all the damage was. Just get that polished up to a nice shine again. I'm working my way along the edge. Just getting that nice and smooth so there's no dents and things at the back. <clears throat> and then just a little bit where I touched up where that solder joint was there. Very gentle. And then I'm just going to give it a light pass over everything just to clean it. And then we're ready for reassembly. Got me a second. So that's the restoration done. So we've got the blade all nice and straight and shiny. And I've also got the handle. So the last bit is to insert the blade back into the handle. And this is going to vary depending on what is inside the handle. Now you remember earlier I said that I thought the stuff inside the handle was shellac, it was like a brownie substance. Well the thing is the stuff that's inside the handles can vary and it really depends on the manufacturer. So it could be any type of pitch, plaster, kind of tar, it could be anything really. So what I've done is I've got the handle and I'm just holding it in the clamp there so it's nice and straight. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a nice soft flame, very, very gentle. And what I'm trying to do is to melt the, the shellac, the pitch, or whatever substance this is. Just to melt it and get it nice and soft and gooey. And then hopefully I'll be able to put the handle and the blade back together again. So it's just had a minute or so though and I can see it. You can see it's starting to bubble a little bit now. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of heat to the tang, just get that warm. And I'm going to try and insert it. So let's give it a go. Okay, so I've got the handle in, it's nice and straight. So what I want to do now is just warm it up a little bit more around here because I want that pitch, whatever it is, to melt into the little indentations around the tang so it seals it in nice and tight. That's had time to cool down now and off camera I've just given the whole thing a light buff over just to blend everything in. And all I'm doing now is I'm just finishing it off with a selvit silver cloth. Very important. You remember how short the tang was? It only goes in an inch. It's not full tang. It's not screwed on the end like some knives. It isn't riveted through the handle. It's not even soldered on. You've got a little one inch spike there that's inserted in, which what is basically an antique version of hot glue. Um, a big problem that a lot of people find with these, and indeed old knives and forks with the pitch filled handles, is if you put them in a dishwasher, the heat of the hot water melts the pitch and they just fall to pieces. So do be very careful. If you've got things like this, you know, use them, enjoy them, but be very careful with them. They are what they are. So there we go. Nicely polished up straight as I can get it, as lined up as I can get it. I've still retained the patina in the detail there, in the engraving, and of course I've retained the all-important hallmarks. So it still looks like an antique piece, which it is, this is, this is over 100 years old. But it looks nice, and I hope you'll agree that will look stunning in anyone's silver display cabinet. If you found that useful, you picked up any tips, uh, you just enjoyed the ride, then please remember, like, subscribe, check out the rest of my channel for silver, jewellery and tour reviews. I've been Dave Wilson, thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.